Lawmakers, stunned, saddened, and galvanized by the recent Charlie Hebdo killings and the freedom of speech demonstrations which followed both in France and around Europe. Welcome to our roundup of the first European Parliament plenary session of 2015 here in Strasbourg. Latvia's ambitious jobs and digital agenda priorities for its current presidency of the EU were spelled out by its prime minister here. And the European Parliament and member states have finally reached an opt-out deal on GMO crop growing in the EU. But we begin our coverage with the moving tribute in Parliament to the victims of the Charlie Hebdo massacre. Je suis Charlie. It has become the defiant and poignant rallying cry of defenders of freedom of speech around Europe and the world, a reference to the journalists of Charlie Hebdo among the 17 slain victims in Paris last week. In Parliament, the EPP group's leading French MEP Alain Lamassou explained why Europe, which is united in diversity, is now also sadly united in adversity. Des journalistes tués parce qu'ils étaient journalistes. Journalists killed because they're journalists. Police killed because they're police. Jews killed because they're Jews. Muslims killed because they read in the Quran that peace is God's most beautiful expression, and comics killed because they dare to laugh. Parce qu'ils osaient rire. Lamassoura set out his vision in the wake of France's worst act of domestic terrorism in two decades. La paix comme but. Peace as a goal, as a means to settling differences whilst preserving them. This is the miracle achieved by Europe. This miracle is threatened. Ce miracle est menacé. À nous d'être dignes de... It is up to us to be worthy of this great cry for brotherhood from crowds across Europe that echoed yesterday in the silence. European Council President Donald Tusk, in his first official appearance in the European Parliament, referred to the specter of extremist violence haunting Paris and Europe this past week. I am sure in this room we have a difference of opinion on the cartoons of Charlie Hebdo. But as Europeans, we share the fundamental view that no one has the right to use violence or murder people because they have a different religion or a different sense of humor. EPP Group Chairman Manfred Weber said politicians now had to step into the breach. One concrete step could be to implement now a PNR system, a passenger name record system on the European level, to know better about the traveling of these people who are under investigation. More competitive, more engaged, more digital. Those are the three main targets which Latvia, one of the EU and the Eurozone's newest members, has set for its six-month rotating presidency. Ambitious perhaps in an age of austerity and recession, but Latvians believe hard-earned experience in doing more with less is on their side. Latvia once faced record high unemployment and low growth during the recent economic crisis. But thanks to successful structural reforms, it appears to have turned the corner, said Latvian Prime Minister Laimdota Straujuma. Latvia's presidency aims at building a competitive, digital and globally strong Europe. Our objective is to defend the European values, a space of freedom, security, justice and mutual tolerance which characterizes Europe in the world. EPP Group Chairman Weber praised Latvia's resilience. In this regard, Latvia remains a glimmer of hope in economically difficult times for the European Union. How it can be done right, how the future can be built. GMOs, or genetically modified crops, have been a source of controversy for the EU's farmers and consumers alike since years. Now confusion about the legality of national bans on GMO crop growing has been cleared up once and for all here in Parliament. It's the culmination of four years of contentious debate. The new procedure approved by Parliament gives each EU member state the right to opt out of growing GMO crops. Several states, notably the UK and Spain, remain favorable to GMO crops. The EPP Group's chief negotiator on the issue is Austria's Elisabeth Köstinger. Her country and its strong organic farming constituency is strongly opposed to GMO crop plantings there. I'm very happy and glad that we found a solution and that we got this compromise. A lot of member states demand to be GMO free in future. And now we have found a procedure where we have uh, legal certainty for those member states uh, which want to ban uh, GMO um, cultivation on their t t territory. Kirstinger added that crucially, 
GMO companies cannot challenge the national bans. I think it's a victory for those uh, citizens and uh, member states and farmers who want uh, to be GMO free. It's also a yeah, victory for the EPP group because uh, uh, we always said uh, we want uh, to have a freedom of choice for the member states and for today we reached it. That's all from this plenary session in Strasbourg. If you want to find out more about the largest political force in the European Parliament, visit eppgroup.eu. Thanks for looking in and see you again soon.